welcome all of you. We're delighted to have you with us uh, today. This is uh, Tuesday afternoon, March 16th, 2021, and it's 3.30 p.m. in uh, Mountain Daylight Time. We're in Utah. Um, I'm Don Snow. I'm in Provo, Utah this time. I'm usually doing these from down in St. George, but I'm in Provo at the moment. And Gerhard Roof, who's our host, is over in Orem. And we have people online with us from all around Utah and even Maine today, and I don't know where else uh, coming up. And we're delighted to have you with us. Uh, our class today uh, is on the computer health and uh, it's part one of a series that I'll do. This one is on hard drives and programs. Uh, what you can do with a hard drive that you need to take care of to make it uh, go a little bit faster because after a while they slow down and so on. And then programs and installing and, and uh, updating programs. And we'll show you some free programs that are very helpful to, uh, to use. Uh, uh, with that. There are notes and a handout that goes with this, and across the bottom of your screen uh, is the link on my, that's my web page, where uh, the notes are stored, and all the past classes are listed on there with the notes, uh, and there's links on there as to where you can find these classes on both Facebook and on Zoom. If you're watching this on Zoom, you're interactive with us now. If you're watching it on Facebook, uh, either now or later. Uh, it won't be interactive, but uh, you will have information on there. Um, let me click on this thing, remind you about Roots Tech Connect. It happened about two weeks ago in Salt Lake, uh, from Salt Lake, but broadcast all over the world, uh, sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and it was wonderful. It had just so many things. They had 1,500 classes uh, on there, and uh, I think it was 250 different speakers. I gave one of the classes on there and we, we recorded it. Gerhard helped me record it several months ago and we that's on there. But you can watch all this stuff for the next year on there. And it is a goldmine of information. In fact, my next class of these classes in two or three weeks uh, is going to be about the Roots Tech website before we continue on with this series on, on your computer. The notes are online for this class and for all of my classes. And there's the link again. The UVTAGG is Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group. And we're in our 31st year of that, if you can imagine that. We started with the old PATH Users Group. And Gerhard and I have been working on this with this group for oh, at least 20 years together, or probably longer than that. And uh, the group has been going for at least 30-something uh, years. Anyway, on that website is where my web page is, and there's, that's where the classes are. And we'll look at those notes here in just a, a little bit. We're going to be looking today at a bunch of free programs. And these are going to be the programs uh, that we'll be considering. Bell Arc Advisor, uh, these are all free for personal use. Uh, if you want to use them for commercial things or a, a government or a educational thing, you might have to pay for them. But for personal use, these are all free. Uh, Revo Uninstaller, that's a very helpful uninstall program. We may not spend much time on that, but there's a link in the notes as to how you can download that. And that's one that I find helpful. And Glary Utilities. That's a free program that I want to spend a lot of time on today, talking about what it'll do and how to do it, because it will actually check your files and your programs and tell you which ones need updating and give you information about updating and defra all kinds of good stuff on there. So we're going to be looking at those here in a minute. Now, on the, uh, uh, the demos here, let me stop for just a second and go to uh, the notes themselves. That link for the notes, it, well, the link for the notes takes you right to this page, uh, Don's Nose Class Notes page. And uh, this, is, this is online. It's available all the time. I've been using, writing this now for oh, I got at least 15 years. And uh, there's, there's links here to other uh, articles and stuff that I write because I write a freeware corner article every month and that's on here in this freeware corner stuff. And then class is coming up. Here's the classes. This is the, the one, two, three are the ones that are on here now. There's today's 2021-03-16. That's international date format if you're, if you're new to the idea. It's, uh, you've heard me talk about it before if you've been here before because that date format, year, month, day, makes things alphabetized chronologically. So when you alphabetize, everything's chronological. 
And uh, if you use the standard date format the way we do in genealogy and other things here in the U.S., it does, they don't, it's not chronological. But anyway, the, 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 this is today's program and uh, today's class, and we'll talk about that in a minute. There's the one for next time. It's going to be on the, on the 6th of, um, of April. Now, that's the day the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was first organized in 1830. And, uh, but th that one, we're going to talk about the Roots Tech Connect uh, webpage. And then we'll go on after that with some more classes on this series on, uh, uh, on uh, computer health. Um, these are the past classes that we've had. And there's where the, the link for the videos uh, online and so on. And there's the, the, where you can find all the notes, uh, et cetera. Okay, now I've already clicked to, to click on that one for today's notes. I'm gonna, uh, so it's right here. This is the handout for today, Computer Health Part One, Hard Drives and Programs. And there's an abstract here that tells you a little bit about what we're going to be doing about hard drives and, and programs, etc. Let's go through the notes here because I want to spend a little bit of time on them and you'll know what to do with the notes later on because we'll be talking about stuff, but most everything I say will be involved, will be written here in uh, the form so you don't have to take uh, your own notes on this. Uh, there's, the, there's me and there's my email address if any of you want to get in touch with me. Um, I'm, I'm half the time, most of the time I'm in St. George, but I've got a condo in St. George and a condo here in Provo. Uh, then uh, here's the, there's some tips I put on here since people are usually new to this, at least many of you are, and they don't, are not aware of these tips and I find them very helpful. So they're on there. Then here's the item four is the program, the problem for today, working with hard drives and installing and updating programs. Now let's talk for a minute about operating systems. Uh, the nickname or the, the, what do you call it? The, 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 the well, OS, the uh, acronym is OS, operating system uh, and install program. Now some of you may be using a Mac uh, this is this is Windows, Windows 10. But you, if you're using a Mac, there are equivalent problems, uh, equivalent programs for these, and you can probably find those by typing into Google something like equivalent Mac equivalent program for whatever the thing is, and you probably find something that will do the same sort of thing uh, for Macs. But I don't use a Mac and have them, so I really don't know much about them. Windows 10, which is the current version of Windows, comes in several different versions. There's the home version, uh, which is, happens to be the one that I'm running on this computer, the professional version, and there's a couple of others, business and I don't know what all. And to see which one you have, uh, in case you don't know which it is, <laughs> go down here to the bottom and right down here, I hope you can see where my cursor is. It's got that little round thing on it that helps me find it with my, my macular degeneration eyesight. Now it helps me. Right down here in the bottom, if you type in right down there, I click down there, I'm going to type in Windows version and then hit enter. Whoops. Yeah. Did I get it? I, did I spell it wrong? I think I, I might try it again. Windows version. Yeah. Okay. Now hit enter. There's the version uh, that I'm running here. Now, most of this you don't really need to know, but some of it you do. Uh, up here near the top, it says OS name, the Microsoft, it's Microsoft uh, Windows uh, Home. On my other computer, I run professional. This one is uh, the home version. That's one of the things you sometimes need to know. Another thing that you sometimes need to know is a little bit further down here where it says system uh, let's see, it's not system model, it's an excellent system type. Uh, and I can't highlight this, it won't highlight uh, here, but we can see where my cursor is around there. It says X64. That means it's a 64 bit version. There are 32-bit versions and 64-bit versions. And sometimes when you download software, you need to know which version your computer is running. Uh, 64 or 32, because their installers are different. It means uh, 64 is 2 to the 6th power, and 32 is 2 to the 5th power, and it's the size of the words that uh, the thing will take, the bytes. But uh, uh, you only need to know that to know which one to click on. Now, I'm going to show you a program that will give you this information and a whole lot more here in just a second. So let me back out from, from there and uh, get back to, uh, let's see, that was the, let me, what's that, let's back out of that thing. 
and uh, get back here to the notes. So that was this item seven, the Windows 10 versions and how you can see what you uh, had on there. Now, there's another way you can get more information besides this program I'll show you in a minute. And that there, there you can do that on here. Get about, uh, uh, you type in, well, you, you go to control panel and type in stuff and you get more information. But I'm going to show you a program that'll take care of all that for you. Uh, and it's right down, let's see, Windows 10. Um, well, let me say something about Windows 10. Um, Windows 10 is the only version of Windows that Microsoft is still updating. If you're using Windows 7 or XP or anything eight, anything earlier, just anything earlier, they are no longer working on it, which means that when people find flaws and bug holes that you can get into it and uh, cause problems, you're not protected because they don't update that version anymore. Windows 10 is the only one that they're updating. And so I would highly recommend that you if you're not using Windows 10, if you're using an older version that you actually update, it'll cost you a little money, but not a lot, but it'll save your grief in, a, in, a, in many cases. Now, here's this item 10 down here, this Bell Arc Advisor. There's a place where you can download it. It's free for personal use. Uh, it's, it's commercial if you want to use it for uh, uh, another, uh, uh, you know, from some some commercial version. But let me show you what it'll do. I've installed it on my computer and I've run it I, a couple of days ago. I ran it. I run it about every six months. Let me show you. I did a copy of it. I'm going to Windows D to close this thing. And now let's see, Windows D. And right here, right there is a version of it. this I did. I opened this up and saved this off from Bell Arc Advisor a couple of days ago. Can't remember the date. It's probably on here somewhere, but it's been within the last couple of days. Now, as I'm scrolling down through this, this is not live. This has been recorded on my computer, and I save this off every, every few months. Computer profile summary. It gives you a summary of everything hardware and software that's in your computer. Uh, it's phenomenal what it gives you. Here's the operating system. It says I'm using Windows 10 home version, 64-bit version. It gives you the date that that first came out, which build of that I've got. Uh, the system model, that's the, uh, uh, where I got my, this is PC laptops, uh, uh, the computer I got. And I got sucked into buying one from them and I don't recommend it. Uh, it takes too long to try and get anything fixed. It's guaranteed forever, but it takes too long to get it fixed. Uh, but anyway, it, it tells you a little bit about that. It gives you dates on here of the information. Uh, the processor that's in this particular computer, it's an Intel chip. Uh, it's an i5-6400 uh, and uh, the circuit board is this, that, and the other. It, all this is hardware stuff. And then it starts on software. There's the drives that I've got. I've got three hard drives in this computer, a solid state one. That's what it boots off of. That's like a big flash drive. That's, that's a one terabyte hard drive. And then there's two two terabyte uh, regular uh, hard drives, and, and that we need to talk about the, what you do with those here. In here, uh, the the memory modules, how much memory I've got in here, all this stuff. It it, it 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 took about five minutes, and it generated this whole thing for me, and I just saved off the whole thing. Uh, it goes down here; it'll show uh, all the uh, the uh, software that I've got on here uh, on this computer. Uh, there's I don't even know how this stuff is. But there's just lots of stuff on here. And then uh, my virus protector is listed on here. Uh, communications and other kinds of things. Uh, and, and when you get down here a little ways further, it's, it's got stored on. There's what I've, the, hard, the flash drives I've plugged in within the last 30 days. Uh, eventually, I've, it comes down here to where all my passwords are. My, not my passwords, but the, uh, the license keys. They're all in here. I'll, I'll go past that fast so they don't get recorded on here. Uh, missing update things. Uh, there's my software licenses. I'll skip through that fast. But that's got the codes for my Microsoft thing uh, for my, uh, oh, I use Ancestral Quest as a genealogy program. It's got all the code for that in there. And so every six months or so, I run this thing and save this off so that I've got a copy. Of it. Here's a list of the software, software versions and the usage. Here's what I've got in here 
Every program that's installed on this computer shows up in this list and it'll tell the information about it. It is phenomenal. It's free. The program is free and it's uh, Bell Arc Advisor and it gives you all this stuff that you can save off. Now, that's just uh, an example. I'm going to close that so that we can get back over here to the notes. That's this item. Uh, well, that's item 10 down here, Bell Arc Advisor. So that's one thing I, I highly recommend that you do that periodically to see what you've got. And uh, that'll give you information about what's on your, uh, uh, on your computer, both hardware and software. Now, install programs are in here. There's information about those. Uh, oh, there's a note here about drivers. Drivers, they're small programs that uh, connect your computer to, oh, the monitor or to the disk drives or to uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the speakers or one thing or another. And it'll give you information about those. And I, I looked at mine the other day and I have a bunch of my drivers that are out of date that I need to update, but I didn't dare do it before this class, just in case something got screwed up <laughs> and the computer wouldn't work before the class. So after the class is over, then I'll, I'll worry about that. <clears throat> and then I got a grandkids and kids that can help me if I get in a problem with it. Now here's this glary utilities. Well, let's see, I guess I mentioned up here this other program uh, uh, that uh, a Revo uninstaller, that's item 13 here. Uh, we won't take time to talk about that, but it's a good uninstall program and it's free for uh, personal use. Um, and it really helps in if you wanna eliminate programs. And if you do have a bunch of programs on your computer that you don't use, I'd recommend that you get rid of them because they take up space and they slow things down. Now, this is the one I want to spend, this Glary Utilities, I want to spend uh, uh, the rest of our time on, or most of the rest of it. It's a free program for personal use. Uh, it's commercial if you're using it for, uh, you know, for a company or something. There's where you can get it, and you can download it, and I've installed it, and I've been using it. I've probably been using it for 15 years on my computers, and it, it is so helpful that I use it oh, at least two or three or four times a week for one thing or another. So now I'm, I've got it already installed, and so I'm going to do a, a Windows D key to get back here and uh, and get this. This is it right here. This this one. These others. There's that Bell Arc Advisor thing that I talked about, where I'm circling. I don't know whether you can see it. Uh, this is the Revo installer. Usually, I, in fact, I'm going to drop those now. I usually put them right into this thing, uh, which is a. Uh, 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 no, I need no. That got me out of the. Hmm, shouldn't have done that. That got me out of my. Uh, let's see. I need to go back to Alt Tab and get back to uh, to here. Um, that uh, well, that was well. Uh, Windows D will get me back where I want to go. Uh, I won't take time to put that other one in. I keep those down here in this. I got another icon collection up in here and the programs I use regularly are there, but then I got a folder that I put most of these icons that I don't use all the time. This one is what uh, the, this one right here is the one that's their utilities. I'm gonna click on it because it's running on my computer now. And so uh, here it is, it says, do you really wanna allow this to change your computer? And uh, Windows 10 will do that for you. And so I'll say, yes, I do want to do it. Okay, here's what it looks like. Now, this is the program itself, and it's running now on this computer. Now, across the top are three uh, different tabs here. The first one on the left says overview. Now, what's included in this overview thing is, first of all, right there in the center is how long it took your computer to boot up. It keeps track of this. It took this computer 24 seconds to boot up. And that's been a much higher in the past on, on, on other computers. But that says that that's 88% uh, faster than most computers. And there are ways you can shorten that time by eliminating different things. And this gives you the options to do that. We'll talk about some of the ways to do that uh, in a few minutes. Over here on the right is a thing that says, check to see if there's a newer version of this thing. I'm going to click on that. And it's going out to the internet that says, nope, your, your computer is running the most uh, uh, frequent, the most, the most recent version of Glary Utilities. And so uh, at, about every, oh, at least once every two weeks, they update this thing. 
because it's got some virus checker things and all kinds of different things, new programs that uh, we'll check on and so on. So I, I click on that thing to, to uh, check that. Now, there are other things here in this overview, but let's move on to the center tab here, which is the one click uh, they used to call it one-click maintenance. Well, I guess they still got that one hyphen click in there. Now, what this thing does is it has places over here on the left that you can put checks in. And uh, I've checked all of them except the one about uh, disk repair, because that does a defrag, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. And I don't want my solid-state hard drive to even to have it do anything on that, because it doesn't need it but the other two uh, hard drives do. And so we'll talk about what to do with that. But I unchecked that one, but the rest of them are all here and it's gonna clean up things. It's gonna check various things for errors and so on. <clears throat> I click down here, right there, and I click and it starts through my computer and it runs through and this will take about maybe a, a minute and we'll talk while it's doing it. It runs through and checks for errors. Uh, in the system, not errors of data or something like that. But uh, it's, it's some of you remember the old check disk program. Uh, it's like that, uh, and it does the same sort of thing. Oh, it says Google Chrome needs to be closed uh, to clean. Do you want to do that? Uh, well, I'm, I no, I don't, because I don't want to get rid of that. So I'll click no. And so it'll skip. They won't check uh, Google Chrome to see what's going on with that on this, uh, this particular uh, uh, run through. But I usually just say, yeah, go ahead and close that. And oh, it's coming back again. No, I don't want to, because it's, it's saying uh, that we can't finish it up without doing that. Uh, anyway, it keeps on going and it goes through all the stuff. And then, and it, it emptied the recycle bin. So if you have something in the recycle bin and I've got that checked up here, dump that out, it's cleared off too. Now keep in mind that in the recycle bin, when you download or when you delete a program or delete a file, it's not gone off your computer. It's just moved into the recycle bin. So if you did it by accident, you can come back and get it until you empty the recycle bin. So just be sure before you run and clear the recycle bin that there's nothing in there you really want. Okay, now it has done that. It's gone through the check disk and it's gone through all of it and it's got it all checked and it's, everything is okay. And I said, fix any, any problems except this disk repair thing. Check anything else and make sure that it's working all right. So every, oh, once or twice a week I run this thing because when I install new programs or something, there's frequently there are problems with it. Now, over here on the third tab, there's all kinds of, of goodies, advanced stuff over here. Now, and we'll talk about some of these. Over on the left are different sorts of things. If you click on here, each one of these opens up a different collection of, of different programs in there. Take a look at this one down here. There's an icon right down here that was even on there before where it says, there's, you see a number seven there? That's the one that came from right here on this. This is on the advanced and clean up and repair. And right down here where it says, uh, not uninstall, but uh, the one that, I guess is not on that one, it's on the, on the next one. Software update, it's this one right here. This is an, an icon that's there all the time. You can click on that icon and it will go through. And it, what it will do is it will look at all of the programs that you have installed on your computer. And then it will say, there's a new version of this. There's a new version of this. There's a new version of this. You'll see it here in just a second uh, as it uh, has, has gone through and uh, cleaned up things. Uh, it has not, uh, let's see, let me click on, on uh, uh, re, uh, yeah, rescan, there's a scan here. You can see this bar that's just starting over here. It's going across, it's, it's going through the, the computer and finding all the programs that I've got installed. And then it will open up the browser, and here it is. And this is a list. This is called File Puma. That's the name of the company here, the Glary Utilities Company. Here's a list of every program on my computer that needs updating. And this is one caliber. That's a, a program that reads and catalogs books and PDF files. It says you've got installed on here version 5.8.1 but they're up to version 5.13.0. And you'll notice that if I highlight caliber, it will 
it's a it's a link it will underline i'm going to do one of these here in a minute to show you mozilla firefox is 64 bit my version that i've got installed is 86.0 something but they're up to 86.0.1 uh mozilla thunderbird that's a email reading program i don't use it but i got it on here uh, notepad plus plus the 32-bit version uh, my version is 7.9.2 but they're up to 7.9.4 and Skype, I haven't updated in a while because I don't use that very often. Anyway, you see every program that's on my computer that needs updating, there it is. And so let's actually go through and show you what happens. I'm gonna update my Mozilla because it's out of date. I don't use Mozilla Firefox. Uh, I use Chrome as my main browser, except for printing. Uh, Firefox is so much better in printing. So when I print notes or something, I go to it. So I double click on that. And it'll say, okay, yeah, here we go. This is Mozilla 64-bit. Here's the current version. What do you want to do? You want to download it? And they've got on their website all these programs that you can download uh, the updated versions. I'll say, yeah, download it. I click on that download. Uh, and this is something that's come up there recently that they want. Uh, they're trying to get me to do something else I don't want to do. So I'm going to close that. And uh, it'll think for a minute here. And then it'll it'll come back and it'll say, okay, we're ready to go. Uh, we're going to say where you want to save this. Um, come on, there it is. Okay, and I have it set so that my Chrome, it will go to this uh, Windows, uh, that the one terabyte, that's the solid state hard drive, and I call it Downloads on C. And so I have it set so that it'll default to that. Here's the name it's going to give it. Mozilla Firefox, that date, uh, that version. And I sometimes write, I don't always, but sometimes I write on here, freeware, F-R-E-E-W-A-R-E, -E -E, and today's date, 20, 21, 03, what is today? The 16th. I don't really need to do that because their information is there, but now I'm going to click save. Okay, and so now I'm saving, uh, I'm saving that on there. Now, what it's doing is it's saving. Oh, I, I, uh, it's down here below. Oh, my bar is covering it up. My my zoom bar is covering it up. Let's see if I can move that zoom bar out of the way. Let's see if I can. Well, I've moved it over. Now I can see it. Okay, there it is. It's down there at the bottom, and you you the you, the zoom bar wasn't covering it for you folks, but it was on my computer. There it is. So now I click to install that. There it is, it'll say, okay, we're opening it up. And it'll say, what do you wanna do? And it'll say, do you really wanna let this program change? It's Firefox installer. Yeah, I do. And so it says, welcome to the Microsoft Firefox uh, setup wizard, etc." Click next. And then what do you want? Do you wanna use the uh, standard? No, I always do the, the uh, custom installation because the standard one, defaults and says, okay, you're gonna use this as the, your uh, uh, your default program. And I don't wanna use that as my default browser. So I always put the custom thing in there and then it'll say next. And so then it gives you some options. Where do you wanna put it and all this stuff? I'll leave it there, click save, and it'll say, okay, you're ready to go. Yep, install it, next. Okay, and now install, did I hit install? I couldn't see what that said down there. I think it's doing okay. Yeah, okay, it's there. Now it says, do you wanna launch it? No, I don't wanna launch it. So I'll, I'll uncheck that thing so that when I finish it, it won't, there it is. Now finish. Okay, now it has updated my uh, Firefox program on my computer. And so now I can I can actually close that and go back over here and start working on some of these others. So now if I ran that again, Firefox, would not show up in here as needing updating because it's got the latest version. And I do that periodically to check and see what the versions are uh, on there. So I find that really helpful in uh, in actually running the, uh, uh, the program uh, itself. Let me see if I can get back to uh, uh, over here and tell you a couple more things. How's our time going? Oh man, it's four o'clock. Um, okay, so uh, let me just uh, quickly give you a couple of other ideas as to what you can do here. That was this item down here. It's an icon on, on the whole thing that you see all the time on any one of these three, but it's actually in this 
uh, the, the program itself is in this advanced type thing under optimize and improve, and it's the software update one. Now look at some of this other stuff that's in here. There's that disk cleanup thing, and uh, that's the uh, sort of thing that we ran uh, earlier. There's on here, there's a registry uh, a repair that'll take, take care of getting some things straightened up uh, on there. Um, Shortcut fixture, uh, you know, sometimes shortcuts get fouled up and they get in the wrong place, etc. cetera. Uh, someplace in here, let's see, is it on this one? There's a startup. Yeah, there it is, startup manager. Uh, if you click on that one, startup manager, I'll just show you. It shows you the different kinds of programs that are set to run. And it gives you a way of turning those off if you don't want to run that particular program. These are the kinds of things that you can turn off uh, or on. They're, they're set to turn on now. And it'll tell you how long it's going to take. It's going to take 15 hundredths of a second to run that particular program um, at the start. Some of these I've got turned off, a bunch of these down here where they're grayed out. They're not running at all. But then there's a few other programs here that run later at different time periods and uh, all that sort of thing. But you can straight straighten out a good share of your startup problems so that uh, so they don't take so long to start. When you install a new program, they stick the thing in here and, and it says, oh yeah, we're going to start this every time you run Windows. Uh, it, it, it's a pain. It's a, and the bloatware that comes in and so on. But this gives you a way of uh, going through the startup things, of going through it. There's one here on the defrag. That's on this uh, optimization. Uh, here's the here's the disk defrag. Let me just say a quick uh, little bit about that. Uh, what defragging is? What happens is on the hard drives, if a file is going to be stored, it's stored wherever there's wherever it can find a a, a gap where there's nothing else stored. But if, if the file has to be bigger than the gap, when it gets to the end of the gap, it says, oh, we haven't got enough space. Go to, and then it's got the next gap, wherever that is, and it could be, you know, uh, way, way down the, the list. Uh, and then and then when it, it puts more junk in there, and then when it gets to the end of that one, it's like file cabinets. If you had a, uh, a, a collection of file cabinets, with each one with four or five drawers in it, and envelopes uh, or uh, file folders, and you start to store a big file, uh, you start maybe in drawer three of uh, cabinet one, drawer three, file 10. You get to the end of that file, none of space. So you put a note there and it says, next go to cabinet 14, drawer three, and uh, uh, file 10 and uh, find the new one. And then at the end of that one, if there's not enough space, it says go, to, go back to cabinet three, file four, disk three or uh, file three, it, that's fragmenting. Uh, the files are fragmented. And and when the hard drive, the way the old the style, the main hard drives work, not the flash drive, not the SSD, solid state, but the uh, the other kind, there are platters that spin. And those platters are about, uh, about three inches in diameter, and there may be several of them. And there's a little head that reads the magnetic thing on there. And if it's stored in different places, the, the, to pick it up, it has to go here, and then it jumps down to the other head and picks up a different thing. And it takes quite a while for it to, uh, uh, to find the whole file. That's what fragmenting does. It slows down your computer. And so when you defragment, it saves off the file over on the side, finds a big enough space, puts the whole thing in so that it that uh, uh, the whole thing is is in one piece, and so it doesn't have to jump from place to place to to get it. And so periodically, uh, it helps speeds up your computer to run the uh, defragment thing on here. Now notice there's three hard drives on here. This is the, the check is in the second one. That's a two terabyte hard drive. That's one of these platter hard drives that does need defragmenting. And the, the, the E drive on here is another two terabyte one, that one does. But the first one here is a one terabyte solid state hard drive. Those you don't need to defragment. They work so fast, there's no, like, no movable parts. And so they're just like a flash drive. And so you don't need to worry about those. And so you don't defragment those.
anyway, that's defragging. And I ran this a couple of days ago to defrag my hard drives to see what else needed doing on there. You can see all the stuff that's in here in this program. And this whole program is free for personal use. It's just, uh, and I've been using it for probably at least 10 or 15 years. And I've never had a problem with it, either updating my programs or uh, uh, well, otherwise. So that's Glary Utilities, and I find that a really helpful uh, program. Now, let me get back over here to uh, our our uh, PowerPoint. There's the, the demos that we've seen. Whoops, I uh, didn't mean to get into that. I wanted to get back to, uh, to click on. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Uh, let me click on, double click on that. Here we go. Uh, well, let me see. Here's a summary as to what we've talked about. We looked at hard drives and what you can do with them. And uh, and then we looked at these programs, Bell Arc Advisor and Revo Uninstaller. We didn't say much about that one, but it's the link is on there. And the Sclera Utilities. Those are free, three free programs that I use just all the time. And they really help uh, speed up uh, your computer. Now, we're uh, it past four, but are there a couple of questions that any of you have uh, before we uh, end today? And if they have, unmute yourself and <laughs> ask your question or make a comment. Anything anybody? There has? are no questions in the chat other than uh, the downloadability of your uh, handout. Oh, uh, which okay. is a PDF file. Uh, there were no uh, comments uh, on the Facebook page. Okay. All right. Do any of the rest of you uh, here have uh, any comments or any questions before we uh, finish up? Anxious to get it installed. Well, <laughs> I try it out. Yeah. Well, it, 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 this is helpful stuff. For me, it'll speed up your computer. And if you haven't deep frag managed your hard drives or ever run this stuff, you may find it may take quite a while to do it, but it's really worthwhile to get it done and it should speed things up. Well, anyway, that's the story. That's uh, computer health. That's part one of a series. We'll do at least a couple more of these. The one hey, next Don. time. Question? Hey, Don, this is Marty. Oh, hi, Marty. <laughs> How you oh, doing? I'm glad to have you join us. Now, Marty's up in, in Oregon. I am Portland, Oregon, or just south of Portland, Oregon. But um, okay. yeah, I, I jumped in late. I, I apologize. I a, oh, that's all right. But, Not a problem. You're, um, you're, go ahead. I had a question about um, just storage because, like, I've got digital files, like digital photos from like 2001, and we're you know uh -huh. um, they take up space and stuff like that. And, right. and I'm, I do computer animation anyway, so I'm like I've, I'm totally paranoid about you know, losing stuff. Yeah, so, right, you're right. So I've got like Google Drive, uh, um, you know, I've got storage on there. I've got, you know, backups on backups and stuff. Do you yeah. have any recommendations for like good ways to organize and, and store your data? Well, I, I, I've got my own system that I, okay. that I use. In fact, uh, some of our stuff, we've talked about it before, but I use a, as a backup, I use Backblaze. Uh, it's, okay. a backup. it's an online version and they they frequently come out to Salt Lake and talk at Roots Text and that sort of thing. And it's not too expensive. I think I pay, I think it's $90 a year. No, it's $90 for two years. And it backs up. I've got five terabytes of stuff backed up on their computers. Oh, nice. Great. And uh, but, but getting it organized first is the trick so that mm -hmm. you know what you got. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Uh, well, because I've got like, you know, ex external drives that I've probably have like literally four or five external four terabyte drives that have like duplicate information on it that I'm like finally going through and trying to call out stuff so that I could put it on a Google Drive or, a, you know, back, yeah. back blaze kind of thing. So yeah. I saw a note but, yesterday that uh, you can buy an 18 terabyte external hard drive for about 300 bucks. Wow. 18 that's, terabytes. <laughs> that's a lot. That's... <laughs> but I can remember when we thought we'd never fill up, you know, 500 megabytes we thought was going to be all we'd yeah. ever need. Who, who right. would ever need any more than that? <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm paranoid just because, like, with external drives or even internal drives, that it, those go bad, you know, at times. That's right. 
And so, you know, and then cloud storage, you're like, is that really safe too? So, yeah, well, uh, I think the ideal is both storage, both cloud and otherwise, because yeah. if, if you've got your computer and external drives, but they're in your house mm -hmm. and your house burns, yeah. the whole thing's gone. Mm -hmm. But sure. if you've got it stored in your computer and online somewhere, you can at least get it back from the online. For sure. And if the online goes down, then you got it in your house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Don? I've got about four or five external hard drives, too. <laughs> Don? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Marty might find it useful to go back and review your class on how you uh, customize your file names uh, mm -hmm. as far as being able to find things that he has, uh, uh, he has been looking for. If it's not well yeah. organized, it sounds like Marty has a lot of information uh, already. Mm -hmm. Well, he probably knows more about computer stuff than I'll ever, ever know or forget because he works in he's a computer scientist. <laughs> but uh, we, we we first met Marty up in in uh, uh, when I was uh, on sabbatical at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada, and that's been years and years and years ago. Yep. And, you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, there is some stuff on the file naming procedures that I oh, find very perfect. Helpful. No, that'd be great, especially for photo family photos and stuff. So yeah, Good. yeah, and I'll, I got I'll check that out. System. I got a special system for photos. No, that's nice. what I do. Okay, awesome. Good. Appreciate we that. Have, we do have some other comments in the chat. Uh, oh, okay. One is one person's asking, "Where can we hire grandkids if we need help?" Well, <laughs> I've got two of my kids are are computer experts. Uh, one of them knows the mission president down in, in Ecuador, so he's not available up here. But the other one is up here still in Salt Lake. And so, uh, and, and, and bunches of the grandkids are, are students at various universities around and doing things and know about it. But uh, I don't know where can you hire a grandkid is a good question. Uh, uh, Paralee, who had trouble uh, muting, uh, uh, having us hear her, uh, says, thank you, Don. I got a new computer just today, and this is the first thing I've done on it. My old oh. computer became so slow, and it couldn't be upgraded. I'm excited to use it. Oh, good for her. Good, Pearlie. We're glad to have you. She's up in Bountiful, Utah. I've known Rod her for years, too. Rodney Gagnon added, uh, I use Black Backblaze, too. Oh, he's the one from, from Maine. Yeah, Rodney. I, I, I like Backblaze. After I, I first heard about them at Roots Tech uh, several years ago, and they were exactly one-fourth the price to the to the dollar, one-fourth the price that the local company here had told me I would have to pay to back up my stuff online. Can I make a comment? Sure. I uh, had all my photos on an external hard drive, uh, probably over a couple of thousand of them, and it was a 10-year-old hard drive. It crashed. Uh -oh. It cost me $2,000 to get those photos back uh, by sending that out. So now I've got stuff on Backblaze, you know, off-site, off my computer. I could throw this laptop in the lake and get all my photos back from the cloud. Yeah, yeah. But you hope the Backblaze doesn't go down in some time. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. So that's why, yeah. But backing up is a real problem. We probably ought to spend a class on that again sometime. I, it's been several years ago since we talked about it, but there's enough questions and comments that we we could compile stuff together and talk about that again sometime. Good. Anything else? Well, I appreciate all of you uh, being with us today. Thanks for taking the time to be with us, and uh, we'll talk to you again in uh, about another, I think it's two or three weeks before the next class. The date's on the on the handouts there. Thanks. <laughs>